my baddies and my zaddies welcome back to my channel i know i know <laughs> This video is long overdue and I've been promising it to you guys for the longest, especially if you've been keeping up with me on Instagram. I'm always like, I'm gonna do the video, I'm gonna do the video, but it's finally here. This is going to be my current top five niche fragrance collection. New fragrances are always coming out. There's always something new on the market. I'm always buying new fragrances. So this is definitely subject to change. But at the moment, these are the ones I'm currently Feeling. I narrowed this list down to five because I wanted to focus on unique niche fragrances. These are some scents that I think nothing else really smells like or when I smell that I'm like, oh you did it. Eh? Things you did, that. Or just something that I feel like was just, just something different on the market. You know what I'm saying? Like smelling perfumes a lot and being a fragrance connoisseur, you smell so many things that are similar and you know, these were just a breath of fresh air. Okay. So first and foremost, for those of you who are not really into fragrances like that, you're probably wondering what the heck is a niche fragrance? There are a few different categories when it comes to fragrances. So the one that you're probably already familiar with is the designer fragrance. Designer fragrances are any brands like Chanel, YSL, Dior, um, Marc Jacobs, anyone who makes other things besides fragrances. In order to be a niche fragrance, you have to only focus on fragrance there's three characteristics of a niche fragrance or a niche brand number one exclusively selling fragrances that doesn't mean that they literally only sell perfume they can sometimes sell candles and body creams that correspond with the fragrances but overall that is what they focus on that is the main thing that they market that is their main source of revenue so that's number one obviously you have to only make fragrances and that is the only thing that can make something niche or not niche the two other characteristics that don't necessarily have to only apply to niche fragrances but something that they're basically known for is using higher quality perfume oils and different notes and things that you don't come across very often like ouds for instance are a very very expensive rare um, note to have inside of your fragrances and so that's not something you typically see in designer fragrances when you go to like Macy's or something and then the third thing is just this uniqueness the goal of a lot of perfumers behind a niche fragrance is usually to make it as unique as possible you want something different you want something that's not already on the market while designer fragrances tend to follow trends so whatever is popular at the moment you can go to Macy's or you know any department store and smell 50 floral fragrances 38 fruity fragrances and you know what I'm saying like it's very redundant that does not mean that there are no unique designer fragrances and it also doesn't mean that every niche fragrance you smell is gonna be super unique or smell like something you've never smelled before that's just that but overall those are the three characteristics that niche fragrances are known for however there's only one thing that actually makes it niche and it is exclusively selling fragrances all right all right so let's just jump straight into it i am gonna start off number five being well i don't even want to say my worst but basically number one is my absolute fave but if you even made it in the top five you gotta be good these are in order and i'm gonna start with number five and work my way up to the grand finale first off we have this beautiful like can we just take a moment just pause everything right now this bottle this bottle what? It is a whole cupcake and it's covered in crystals. This is a fragrance from House of Siage called Cherry Garden. And oh my gosh, like before we even get into the juice, like can you just look at this freaking bottle? What the heck? All House of Siage cupcakes are adorned with 158 handcrafted Swarovski crystals. I always get tongue tied saying that sort of Swarovski. These cupcakes are beautiful. And this is actually, I always struggle getting the lids off of these. <laughs> but this is actually one of the, I don't know if it's the only or if it's just one of the few. I'm just gonna go ahead and be safe and say one of the few niche fragrances that are made by a woman. Most niche fragrance lines, like the perfumer behind it, it's a lot of men, typically from Europe, most likely from Paris. So you get like a very saturated pool of people that are making the fragrances, which leaves little room for diversity. So I am just so happy to support a woman who is behind the nose of the, these fragrances. <sighs> my gosh, this smells so good. This was my first and only ever blind buy. I bought this online because they were having their 50% off sale. And I'm just like, Zoe, you need to just read through the notes 
see if it sounds like something you would like and just pick one just just get one and i'm so glad that i went with this one because mm, it's just so it's a beautiful execution of cherry it is not medicinal it's not like it's not even gourmand so a lot of times people compare this to lost cherry by tom ford i don't think so i think lost cherry gives me more warm vanilla winter fall type of scent this this is fresh and spring this is like such a spring fragrance like it's good for summer too but this just screams spring okay and this is more this has more remnants of a cherry blossom it smells floral it's like a floral cherry rather than like an edible cherry you know mm. it's almost a little green to me like I can pick up on some some earthiness to it and don't hear earthy and like stray away because it's not like dirty patchouli smelling it just smells mm, it just smells like spring in a bottle like oh my goodness it's beautiful I love it so much and I'm so glad that I got this one I do have um, all of the signature scents that House of Siage makes so if you guys are interested and you would like me to do a video reviewing all of their scents I will definitely do that for you, especially because I think that 50% off sale is still going on. So you better go ahead and get you a cupcake while at 180, child, because the retail price of this is $360. So 180 is bomb.com. So I didn't even talk about the notes in this. In the top notes, we have almond oil and aniseed oil. And I think that the almond is what gives it that slight cherryness because there's actually no real cherry in the notes of this. In the heart, you have rose and jasmine, and in the base, you have heliotrope and musk. And when I read those notes, I was like baby that's me so that is what convinced me to get this and it's so it's so beneficial once you know what notes you like so that way you can read something like that and be able to tell if you would like it or not but we're not gonna spend all this time on these fragrances much as we love the cupcakes and wine. so in the number four spot huh we got a nice little gem for y'all. This is for my gourmand lovers right here. Now, we all hear so many good things about the queen, Miss Riri, okay? We all know that a lot of other celebrities, people who interview her, people who have met her, one common thing that they all say about Rihanna is that she smells so good. Well, in 2016, it was revealed what her signature scent is. And after this was released, the sales for this skyrocketed. It was so hard to get your hands on it. But now that the hype has kind of calmed down, it's a little bit easier to access. And that is none other than Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. This is probably one of my favorite niche fragrance houses. Oh my goodness. I love Good Girl Gone Bad by him. I love, oh my goodness. He's just phenom. But... This is Miss Rihanna's signature scent. Who the heck don't want to smell like Riri? Okay, this is Miss Robin Fenty in a bottle. <laughs> this is gourmand heaven. If you like gourmand fragrances, this is what you need to get. And if you don't know, gourmand just means something that smells like you can eat it. It smells edible. That is this, okay? This is... Mm, this is the perfect winter fall scent. I actually wore this the other day and I went over to my aunt's house to do her hair and she just kept telling me like, you smell so good. Like, what is that? It was this. <laughs> it's so warm and cozy. It just makes you want to cuddle. I just picture being by the fireplace with your man. And I mean, you put this on and he's not going to be able to keep his hands off of you, honey, because you literally smell edible. Oh my goodness. Mm. It's the marshmallow for me. And that is one of the notes in here, is the marshmallow and you pick up on it and it's just done so beautifully, oh my goodness. This right here is a sweet oriental fragrance. It is perfect for the winter and, and fall, as I mentioned. Um, I could definitely see this being a little overbearing in the summertime or in the spring. If you don't know, the heavier scents are better for the winter and the lighter, fresh, floral, clean smells are better for the summer because as you perspire, it makes your fragrance projects more so if you don't want to have on a really loud perfume and then it's overly projecting it can be very offensive but yeah this is just oh, it's almost like praline goodness sugary sweet and I usually stray away from that sugary sweet type of stuff but when I say this is gourmand done right kudos to you this has um orange blossom absolute it's got some um of course the marshmallow 
rose, amber, honeysuckle. Oh my gosh, I just I can't get enough. But yes, if you want to smell like Miss Riri, get you some love, don't be shy, honey. Oh, I didn't even show you guys the bottle. So this is it up close by Killian. There's the sides. And I also got like a little travel size decant with it. So take this on my little vacations and be spending like <laughs> that one ever that two. <laughs> with Love Don't Be Shy, they actually just released an extreme version of this. Um, I definitely want to get my nose on it. I don't really know if it's necessary for me to buy it, but I do want to smell it. And it is limited edition. So I think that after they get rid of whatever stock they have, then that's just going to be the end of it. But yeah, I am interested to see how they put a spin on this and made it even more intense and more delicious than it already is. If you have smelled the Love Don't Be Shy Extreme or if you happen to get your hands on it, please comment down below and tell me what you think because I would love to know. Now we are down to number tres, okay? Creed, oh Creed. This is called Royal Princess Oud. And this is actually one I don't hear people talk about a lot. It does not get a lot of praise. It does not get a lot of mention. The thing is, a lot of people actually say that they don't like this because the Oud presence is not extremely heavy, but that's actually exactly why I like it. I personally am not a fan of Oud. I'm sorry, the fragrance world is gonna kill me because it is such a rare gem in the fragrance world that we're supposed to have so much appreciation for it, but it's just not for me. You know, different strokes for different folks, and Oud is just sometimes too smoky and too, like, I don't really want to smell like that I don't, I don't know but this is beautiful and the people who say that the oud presence isn't there are usually saying like they don't smell it at all i think that's a bit of a stretch i do smell the oud i just think it is very very subtle and i think it was done beautifully because i just love it this is a boss b fragrance right here okay this is bossy, okay? This is a woman who knows what she wants, she gets what she wants, and anything in her way is getting knocked over. Okay. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the proposal, but Margaret Tate, who was like his boss, she would wear this, okay? This is giving the Double Worst Prada. This is giving, it's giving Miranda Priestly, okay? Like that bossy, mean type of woman who just is like, tuh. Cause you can't be a shy, timid type of woman and wear this. This is not for the weak. This is not for the faint of heart. Like you need to come into a room and command it, okay? And that is what you do when you have this on. It is, ooh, it is so good. I do also love Creed Aventus for her, but I just think this is way more of a statement piece, way more unique. I feel like Aventus for her can sometimes smell similar to something else I've smelled before. It just is like a nice, soft, clean type of smell, but this is beast mode, this is uniqueness, this is niche done right, okay? In the number two spot, I mean, is it really any surprise? It's Baccarat Rouge, like, come on. It is just, it is so classy, so elegant. It's just, this is where the money reside. Where the money reside, where the money reside. Oof, I love Baccarat. You can never get enough of it. This is just one that hits every time. I don't think I've ever smelled Baccarat on somebody and it didn't smell good. I have heard from others that they have, but that's your experience. I ain't never smelled this smell bad on nobody. In this fragrance, you have jasmine, saffron, cedarwood, ambergris. I mean, I did mention this one in my um, my perfume video. I didn't go too in depth in it because it just speaks for itself. This is honestly one that has gotten so much popularity in the last year. So I haven't really felt the need to just like go into it because there's like 10 trillion YouTube videos talking about Baccarat Rouge, which is why I try to spend my time informing you on the scents that aren't as talked about or as popular. But like I said, it speaks for itself. It landed in the number two spot. So obviously it's <laughs> dead. But it's just, like I said, classy, elegant, grown woman, sexy, just, oof, it's the one. <laughs> it's the one. Now, for the number one spot, this is not even just my number one for my unique fragrances. This is not just number one for my niche fragrances. This is number one, period, okay? This is my absolute favorite fragrance on the face of this planet. It is the most beautiful thing I have ever smelled in my life. It is most likely gonna be my wedding day scent. This is just 
all that. Miss Delina. This is Delina. It is by Parfums de Marley. I don't even want to take the top off because I already know I'm about to act a fool. Ooh. Uh, so let's just let's just talk about the exterior before I get my panties in a bunch. <laughs> this bottle is so beautiful. So feminine. Sorry, my light is so bright. There you go. You can see it a little better. Oh my gosh. It's got like an opaque bottle, smooth, baby pink. And then it's got like this um very heavy duty cap on it with a pink crystal. I think it's a Swarovski crystal as well on top. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Every time. Mm, this smells delish. And I specifically did not put anything on today so that this could be my fragrance of the day. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna just let that sit for a minute because I'm gonna I'm gonna act like I ain't got no no sense up in here. I'm telling you, it's that good. What? Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it is such a beautiful scent, and it's like if you close your eyes and smell it, and you had to say a color that it made you think of, it would just be this baby pink. It smells so feminine and girly and just. Oh my goodness. It's not really one that I would say is bossy. It's not one that I would say is like a, I don't know. It's like, it's like soft and feminine, but it's, it's not too much on the clean. It's, it's just got this very unique smell to it. It has um, rhubarb and lychee in the opening and rhubarb is not something you commonly see used in fragrances and it gives it this tartness. So it's like sour and sweet at the same time. And like, I can't even explain it. Delina also has a big sis. Well, I would consider her to be the big sis. I'd say it's like her sexy big sister, which is Delina exclusive. I'll insert a picture for you. Um, and it smells very similar to this one, except the rhubarb is replaced with pear in the opening. And then in the base, I believe it has, um, it has oud. It is so beautiful. It's more of a creamier, sexier version of Delina. I honestly love them both. Delina is just that girl. I'm sorry, like a lot of people prefer the exclusive over the original, but I like the original. She just came through and <laughs> it just is what it is. The original, the Delina, it costs $320 while the exclusive is $340. I personally still plan to get my hands on the exclusive because it is so beautiful. I do want both. But the average person who's not really into fragrances like that, honestly, just figure out which one you like and get that one. There's no need to have both of them. They're not that crazy different to where you absolutely have to have both in your collection. I personally just do because I'm a collector and a lover of all fragrances. And then Parfums de Marley just recently released a new version of Delina. It is called Delina, I think it's La Rose or like La Rose or something of that nature. I'll insert the name or the picture or whatever. And it looks just like this, except it has a clear, like a see-through peak. So this one's like opaque, you can't really see the juice inside, but with the other one, it is more translucent. But boy, oh boy. Now the new one I have heard is more, almost like an oh fresh version of the Delina. Um, not really as much of a statement as this one is, but I don't know. I have to get my nose on it for myself, you know, see what I'm thinking, but oh my goodness. I just, I love this so much. This is my absolute favorite. Nothing can compare. Nothing will ever take its place. And Parfums de Marley also has a lot of other good ones. It's just very, very, very difficult to get your hands on some Delina. Um, not every high-end department store sells it. It is a Nordstrom exclusive, so they don't sell it at Saks. They don't sell it at, um, at Neiman's. So you have to go to Nordstrom. And then on top of that, not every Nordstrom has it. So you can always order it online, but for a $320 bottle or $340 if you get exclusive, I don't know if it's really the smartest to just blind buy it. I mean, it's blind buy worthy, trust me. It's that good to where I would genuinely say you could buy this without smelling it and I am almost certain you would love it. 
I've never sprayed this for anyone that said it was anything other than spectacular and amazing. I let one of my friends smell it and all my friends are so judgy. They're always like, girl, I can't believe you spending all that money on fragrances. Like it ain't that deep. I give me a couple of woo woo woo, a little designer here, designer there, but you're crazy for spending all that money on perfumes basically. However, comma, she smelled this and she was like, now that, that's worth $300. I would spend money on that. I would pay that price for this because, mm, yeah. Another Parfums de Marley scent that I really want to get my hands on, which I haven't been able to smell due to its scarcity or not even its scarcity, but just how unavailable it is. Like I can't just go into a department store and have like a full layout of all of the Parfums de Marley. And of course it's different in other places. I'm sure if I went to a different state, I'd probably have more access. But where I am located, I just, I have not been able to get my hands on this one specifically, which is Athalia. I really wanted to smell that. It looks just like this, but it's an all black bottle. I have smelled, I think it's Casili, Casili, don't kill me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but that one was okay, but nothing is hitting like Delina. I'm telling you. But thank you guys so much for tuning in for the video. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that you will be sending me all of your new expensive fragrance purchases. <laughs> and I'm so sorry for hurting your bank accounts like this. I'm not really sorry. But it's so worth it. There's nothing better than smelling good. It's a perfect accessory to your outfit. And if you haven't already, you need to find yourself a signature scent. Fragrance is associated with memories. You know, you smell something and it takes you back to a certain place in your childhood, a, a date, someone you've been with before, a friend of yours. It's just, it evokes so many memories. You want to establish your signature scent because if somebody else smells it, they're always gonna think of you, honey. That's how you make your mug. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, I had so much fun filming it. I love talking about fragrances. And of course, of course, of course, I will be back with more content. Maybe I'll do the men's version of like some nice niche ones for men. I don't know what's next. I'm thinking maybe some more affordable fragrances maybe i don't know i don't know i thank you guys so much for the outpour of support you have given me i hit 10,000 subscribers i thought that was totally unimaginable so i am just forever grateful first of all to god and then to you guys for loving on me and supporting me and tuning into my channel so with that being said i love you guys so much and i will see you in my next video